Tech Talk Radio. Let's get it. Part three, study eight. Let's go. You're now in the mix with the young DJ Kuda. Tonight we gonna be going in. On the ones and choices. Let's get it. On Player Talk Radio. Got any questions? Email me at playertalk8 at gmail.com. That's playertalk8 at gmail.com. And after the party, man. Shout out to the after the party, man. <laughs> The rebound, let's get it, man. Baby, I know you want someone to tell you that you always been right. But baby, I got no slash for you. I'ma bring it down for you. I know you're lonely. And you're looking for someone new. He don't treat you right, no. He don't treat you. The way that he should Cause I know that you're lonely And you're looking for someone new He don't treat you right, no He don't treat you The way that he should Shout out to Nature Girl Fiery, this for you baby You gon' call him up and he gon' answer for you You gon' ring him up and he gon' hit him up Keep it with everybody else, but Go home. Leaving you at the fucking front. Nature girl, fiery, go home. I would never do that to you. Go home, bitch. I can never leave you behind. Baby, you need someone to who isn't gonna waste your time. Oh. Baby, you should know you got options. <laughs> the one who called him. I could be the one who got you So tell me why the fuck you stalling Baby, I know you want someone To tell you that you always been right But baby, I got no slash for you I'ma bring it down for you I know you're lonely And you're looking for someone new he don't treat you right, no He don't treat you the way that he should Cause I know that you're lonely And you're looking for someone new He don't treat you right, no Alright, we are back in the building He don't treat you Alright, we are back in the building, man Alright, man We are in the building, man we are in the building. We are in the goddamn building. Oh my god. That was the rebound. Alright, let's get back okay, to the split. Because as I you know, this can be written off as just one psychopath. I'm going to look at uh some really amazing uh So his wife is in a position where she tried to set him up to get killed and the cops end up catching her. Setting him up, setting him up to get killed, and he's just now learning about this too. So listen to how she tries to manipulate them, fellas, women. You cannot maneuver yourself out of this situation. And if you are in a relationship now, or have been in a relationship, or can remember exactly what's going on, this will hit home for you because you will see the power, <laughs> the power. You will see the techniques. You will see the whole shit. You'll see the whole shebang in this clip. All right. Well, a good glimpse of it. Of what, I, what the fuck I be talking about. Let's get it. Um, I would say footage, but it's actually just audio recording of her phone call right after all this goes down. Her phone call to her husband and the techniques that she employed to try and um, manipulate him. Even after he knew that she had tried to assassinate him. All right, so the basic rundown is this. Michael DiPolito had spent time, before he met Dahlia, had spent time in prison for financial fraud. He was in jail for nine months. He was connected to some really shady people. And when he was released, he'd agreed to pay restitution to the victims of his crime. He had a fair bit of money put away. He bought a house uh, after they got married. It was a really brief um, affair prior to their wedding, I think about three months. And right after they got married and he bought this house, 
then all of a sudden his life turned to hell. He had um, somebody calling in with anonymous tips to the police saying that he was dealing steroids and various types of drugs out of his house and they kept on going in with a search warrant and not finding anything. At one point uh, drugs had actually been planted on his vehicle and he managed to convince them that he was being set up because the police knew that that was not the crime that he'd previously committed. He had nothing to do with drugs, it was financial fraud. Uh, his house got put into Dahlia's name in part because he was talking about paying off his restitution really quickly and getting off probation. He was on probation for something like 32 years and as a result of his probation he couldn't move. They couldn't go where they wanted to go and he said well our life's gonna be better if I deal with this and she saw a hundred thousand dollars that he had put away uh, was going to disappear and she also found out that having the house in her name didn't really do much for her because she still needed his signature so um, she was behind all of these phone calls. She was seeing other guys and she was uh, through proxy violence getting them to set him up and then she decided to up her game and actually try to have him killed. So she goes to one of the guys that she was sleeping with and uh, he thought the whole thing was kind of insane. He ended up going to the police and telling them about it saying look like I'm sleeping with the guy's wife but you know this guy's gonna die if, if I don't say something here. She's very serious. So they set him up with cameras and then had him connect her to an undercover policeman who posed as this assassin and they recorded everything. They had all this footage but the police played it out so that they set up the crime scene and then called her and told her that he was dead, recorded her reaction, and then um, recorded all the footage of what she had to say about who she thought might have killed him and listened to her story. Then they confronted her with the fact that she'd been set up and that they had the footage to prove that it was her. She denied it and uh, then they presented Michael in the doorway and uh, her reaction to that is part of what I'm going to be talking about and uh, more significantly the phone call that she made to him from uh, the police station before they took her to jail. And this is a really great example of the types of things women do, not just this woman. Um, what she did could be written off as sociopathic, psychopathic, whatever, but the techniques that she employed to try and rescue her are just the female technique. This is female manipulation and we have this great uh, audio of the way that they do this. So let's get into it. Come here, please. Come here. Mike, come here. Come here, please. Come here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not? I didn't do anything. I heard you. Mike, come here, please. Come here. Come here. So, step number one come here. Come here, please. Come here, please. And, uh, acting all distraught and crying and stuff. What she wants to do is get him into her zone so that he's close to her. Men are so um, vulnerable to female skin. It's really soft in comparison to male skin and it has this psychological effect on them as well as just being close to her. I would guess that if he came close to her she would have pressed her body against him then she would have touched his face softly and she would have looked at him with these big sad doe eyes uh, this uh, childish expression that will then make him more vulnerable to her because he wants to protect exactly what I was saying and also she used his first name you know like his mother would do see it, this this strikes deep it's visceral it's on a visceral level Mike come here Mike come here and then you know the whole crying and this that and the third she knows what she's doing she's done this before it's a game that they play when they figured you out. Listen to this. And for this to work, she has to get him close to her. So that's why she keeps repeating this. And now for the phone call. So again, right off the start, it's come here. And she'll... Uh, get a little bit stronger with that. She wants him in her physical presence because that will make all the difference. Hey, listen, I'm not going to play with you. Honestly, I can't help you. I don't understand what happened. Wait, 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 it's not true. I don't know what happened. How is that possible? I think I'm sitting there. It's not true. It's not possible. You wouldn't even give me two minutes to talk to you, but it's not possible. What's hey. 
start out with a blanket denial and you know me. So she's trying to uh, eliminate all of the actual facts that are in her way and she's trying to get him in a personal space with her. So now um, what she's going to do is she's going to do the, uh, the whole guilt trip thing because she's in jail. It's like, but, but she's trying to take his mind off. The, she has his mind on. She, has, she wants his mind on helping her instead of the fact that she's in jail and why she's in jail. So what's going to happen is she's going to play this mind game where it's going to be like, yeah, don't worry about that. Let's worry about this right now, and she's gonna, she's gonna, is, this is the game that's gonna be played, listen. How in the hell did I hear it? I heard what you heard, it's not true. I heard what you heard, and I saw what you saw. Every day, they showed you, they showed you. And how did I, how So she's saying she heard the tape, and she saw the video that he, that he, Saw, and she's saying that it's not so true. So here you have a psychological bonding. I've heard what you heard, and I saw what you saw. So she's saying it's like, uh, I'm connected with you. We both know the same thing. She's giving him her word, as if uh, her word hasn't just been reduced to shit. What, what you, I, I, I couldn't help it if I wanted to. Like, please, I need an attorney. Can you please help me? So now she's telling him... So he mentions the word attorney. help, and she grabs onto that, and she says, I need an attorney, can you please help me? Right? So she's gone from just saying, I didn't do it, to can you please help me, because that's the key word in what he said. That's the only thing she has to work with right now. Yeah, your father was here, and I spoke to him, and he's going to go talk to your mom, I called him for you already, right? Okay. Well, everybody, everybody knows where you're at, okay. I took care of it. So he tries to distance himself by saying, you know, I've talked to your father and your mother and they know where you're at. Everybody knows where you're at. Trying to basically cut himself out of the situation. And she goes, I need your help. So she's got to keep him personally engaged. I understand it. Too. Like, how do you explain what I saw and heard? Like, I have on my phone call. You know more than anybody. It's not true. It's just give me time so I can talk to you. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. Again, she needs to talk to him, and she means in person. What did you say? I saw it. I heard it. I saw what you saw, and I heard what you heard. Hey, what, what, hey, what the f***? You said you wanted to have me killed. I heard that. That's not true. That is not How true. How can you believe that? How can you believe it? So, she knows what he's seen. She keeps repeating that. She knows exactly what he's seen, and she feels that if he comes close to her, if he gets within her... Uh, zone that she can convince him that what he's seen is not actually reality. And she's got a good reason to think this. I heard your voice. How can you believe that? What is the point? I heard you say it. It's not. I heard what you heard and it's not. What did you mean? So the game that's going on here is that she's going to keep repeating herself to, to build a window. And that window is going to buy time. And when when she gets him into this conversation where he's where she, you know she's buying time what happens is she can sneak in content she can sneak in whatever content that she wants within this within this with, within this whole buying time thing she's buying time even in the prison cell she's buying time her mind is on buying time with what the phone call that? by in time. So listen. I heard you say. I, I heard the tape. I heard the tape and I saw pictures and I saw the whole nine yards. I saw all of it. So why would you need a guy in a parking lot? Explain that. I now she starts talking expansively. I saw all of it because she wants to put that behind them. She doesn't want to talk about what's on the tapes. I will tell you when I see you in person. Please. So now it's kind of like information blackmail. She's not going to tell him what he needs to know. And, you know, for people who've been victimized, they need to know why. This is a really important question for them. But she's not going to give him that unless he comes here, unless he comes to her and puts himself in a vulnerable space, which is close to her. I can't come there anyway. I'm not allowed there. That's not true. Who said that? They tell you that on purpose. That's not true. How can you believe that? 
So he tries to protect himself by eliminating the possibility that he can actually get close to her. And she instantly calls his bluff. It's not true, right? And it isn't true. I mean, he, he could actually probably go there and talk to her, but he doesn't want to. Um, why did he not just say, I don't want to talk to you, right? He's going to start breaking down a little bit in here. And I'll show you footage of, of who Michael is uh, in his victim impact statement so you understand that he's not a simp, right? But instead of just saying, I don't want to fucking talk to you, he's going, well, I'm not allowed to. Diane, I don't know what you could tell me, even if, let's pretend that, oh, it's all better. I can't, they're charging you right now. Don't you get it? I, I didn't do anything. Please. I don't know what to say to you. I can't help you. I can't help you. So now he goes even further. He says, oh, imagine I forgive you. Imagine I don't care that you just tried to have me killed. And it wouldn't matter because I'm not the one pressing the charges. The police are doing it. So again, he's removing himself from vulnerability because um, he is vulnerable. He is extremely vulnerable to this, you know, attempt of hers to engage him, to get him close to her again. And she's next going to go on. You're not trying. You're not even trying. What am I supposed to do? So the guilt trip in there is you're not even trying, which insinuates that you never had love, blah, 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 blah. So it's the guilt trip. All right, so let's finish this clip. You're supposed to get an attorney, please, so I can talk to you. Okay, she's crying now because she's, you know, needs to up at another level. And she's not saying I need an attorney because I need to get out of jail. She's saying so I can talk to you. She's so focused, I just need to talk to you. Because she knows that she maybe can't control the police officer. You can see his attitude when she tries to lie to him versus Michael's attitude because she's managed to seduce him. She's in his mind, she's infecting his brain. So she doesn't need an And that's key. So that's why it goes back to what we were talking about. What Patrice was saying when you love her, you don't like her anymore. That's basically right there. Attorney, just to get her out of jail, she needs an attorney so that she can talk to him in person. You know, one thing after another, one thing after another. You can't explain this one. You know? Come on, man. Now ain't that the truth? She goes like, that's what you think. You no, know, if he gets close to her, if he gets within touching space of her, then she's pretty sure that she can convince him that she didn't do this. What, what do you mean? Did you die? You never die in the party last week. Okay. Now, she's referencing that he had surgery and that he wasn't recovering from surgery very well and, and she took him to Fort Lauderdale. So, these little things that women do, they're always like ammunition to use against you in case they get caught doing something like trying to assassinate you. So why would you need Confronted with direct questions, right? Why did you meet this guy in the parking lot? She's like, I'm limited with my time. Can you please call my mom? She, she reverts to this personal me, 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 right? I'm limited with my time in this phone call. I only have a short time to get you to do the things I want you to do. Okay, can you please call my mom, please? What, you, what else can I do? You can get me time, please. <laughs> Is she going to call me? Now she's giving him a task to keep him involved. See, so now what she's doing is giving him direct, like, direct, you know, commands. It's a direct command. And how she can flip the game like this is because, like I said, it's entitlement mixed with arrogance. Keep that in mind. Basically, to, to put some sort of a requirement on him, some sort of an onus. No, my mom's not going to call you. Why would she do that? Just because she's my mom and she's the one who's going to be trying to get me an attorney now. You have to call her. So she's trying to force uh, continued engagement from him. I did call her already. I talked to her and she didn't believe anything I said. And I said, 
And he didn't say anything bad. This is a guy who just found out the same day that his wife was trying to assassinate him. And he feels like he has to justify himself by saying, I didn't say anything bad. And finally, he says, you're nothing to me. I've seen, I know what you did, and you tried to kill me. So he's getting finally more, def less defensive of himself and trying to justify his current behavior and more uh, proactively saying, look, I don't owe you anything. But it won't last. You'll see. You need to get your lawyer. Your mom's going to get you. I spoke to your brother. And you need to just handle it. Because, Kelly, okay. you listen. If I go scream into the yard or whatever and say, oh, it's okay, it's okay, they're charging your ass. Okay. It's okay. Not a care. It doesn't matter. You can hire five lawyers. They're charging your ass to have your voice, your face, everything on tape. You're in a lot of trouble. So again, with this scenario, even if I go on your side, he's basically, he's not going to just say, fuck you, you bitch, you tried to kill me. He's excusing his lack of help, right? I'm trying to help you. Right? You're not help me. How? How? Because I'm trying to get your head to get off the bullshit and understand what's going on here. Right, bullshit, what's happening? That is, I don't know. How are you going to sit there and tell me that? There you go. Go for the vulnerability again. I'm sitting here. She's reminding him, I'm real. I'm sitting here. She's waiting for him to get his ass down there and sit right next to her. And her time is running short. How are you going to tell me that you didn't say it, you didn't do it? When I saw you say it, I saw you do it. Do you have any idea how I was that they told me what supposedly happened to you, how I got, how I was, and how everything? So she reminds him uh, that if you've seen the footage, she's seen her big display of crying and her despair at finding out that he was dead. And she's like, and how everything? And she uses really expansive language, non-specific language, because she doesn't want him to think about the specifics. She wants to um, keep him focused on things like, I cried, and I took care of you, and everything, and like, I always do everything, and you're my everything. Right, and, and you want to move. So at this point, she's 5,000% sure that she can explain that wanting him 5,000% dead uh, can be explained away if he just gets his self next to her body so that she can influence him better. I never paid anybody. I never gave any money. I never what anything. What did you pay him for? I didn't do anything. It's what I'm trying to tell you. Why did you pay him? Why were you exposed to video camera and tape recorder? Why? Can you meet me in person so I can talk to you? It's the key ingredient. You gotta meet me in person. She's gonna withhold information, which should be easy enough for her to explain if she's telling the truth. But no, she needs to meet him in person because that is where m men get vulnerable to women when they're close to them, physically close to them. No. Explain that to me. Why? 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 Guilt trip. Or am I not? You couldn't even get off the couch the other day, and I came, and I brought you dinner, and I this, and I that, and I always make sure you're always no. there. You're always everything. I never, ever, 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 in my wildest dreams ever want that for you, ever. She's extremely confident now. She has spent a lot of time, obviously not caring about him at all, Crocodile but building tears. up these moments that she can then go back to to convince him that she cares about him she obviously does because she's done all of these caregiver type things as if people don't uh, take jobs careers as caregivers for total strangers you know you don't have to be a compassionate person 
and uh, you know a number of people in caregiver positions, nurses and stuff. It said some pretty fucking vile stuff to the people that they're giving care to. Doing caregiving acts does not actually mean that the person loves you or cares about you even. And I this and I that, and you're always my everything. Expansive language because to her it actually doesn't uh, mean anything specific. She's not done these things because she actually cares. Well, you, you said it. I, 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 no, I did not say anything. Now, like what I've said before, you could write off some of this technique to just being she's a psychopath, so she's not a true caregiver or whatever. Uh, but her use of expansive language, her insistence that he come close to her, um, these are just typical games that women play in order to um, manipulate. And that's why we're looking at this conversation. Not to say, um, you know, she specifically tried to have him killed, and a lot of women won't be going that far. But analyze, uh, as you're listening to this, the the way that she is transforming him. He's stating repeatedly, he's seen this stuff, he knows for a fact, um, because he can't deny what he's seen and what he's heard, he knows for a fact that uh, she's guilty of what he's, you know, what she's tried to do, try to have him killed, and yet he wavers when she confronts him with these emotional scenes, and he's like, oh, you know, like, what do you want? You know, like, he's asking, why would he even ask her, what do you want? At this point, you know, and where else did they take your pocket keys? What did they do? My money? Yeah, it's a paper. What are you talking about? But there's some keys they found in first. Is that my money tied in right now? No, they're just regular papers. No. They were taking the pocket keys. I know what it feels like. Right, and it's got papers. That's it. They're just papers. You know, these would, of course, be papers connected to the deeds to the house and. Uh, anything that would help her get her hands on his hundred thousand dollar savings and she's going she's playing stupid like I don't even know what they are they're just papers so yeah I have these papers but I don't know what they mean to me they're just paper well listen I don't know how you, you're gonna actually have the nerve to sit in a lie to me now I don't understand like I heard you say it now you know I saw you say it now do it I heard you say it You're not even trying. This isn't about, you know, trying to have somebody killed. It's about whether or not he's even trying to listen to her point of view or whether he's even trying to help her or, uh, you know, trying to get her out of jail or trying to get close to her, which is ultimately her main goal here. So he knows that he's a dumbass for even letting her, you know, continue on like this. And yet, even knowing he's a dumbass, he's about to break down and give her some loving advice. Mm, okay, they're getting ready to take me again. Diet, I'm going to listen. I'm going to give you some advice and you need to listen. You're going to be laying around in there for a little while, a couple days. You need to just try and relax and just go with it. And keep to yourself and don't say a lot. I don't love you. She's definitely trying to take his focus off of... And now the tears again and saying they're treating me awful and she reminds him they're physically coming and somebody is going to physically take her somewhere else and touch her and interfere with her. And uh, she's doing this as a desperate sort of last, you know, I love you and don't let these people touch me. They're treating me awful. Gosh, they're treating somebody who tried to have him killed so awfully that he ought to care about it. And he does. He just gave her advice, and it was actually pretty good advice coming from somebody who's been in prison, so he, you know, knows what she should be doing. No. 
you know? Now, he doesn't want her to, you know, dislike him because he's doing a natural, obvious thing. It's, you know, this whole, you know, is like, you gotta understand, you have to forgive me for not helping you. And why does he need her forgiveness? Because he's acting like it, and now he's gonna um, get into something he does care about, which is his property, and it reminds him about why he's so angry. She not crying no more. You see how she just sobered up and now she's talking business. So you now one of the reasons that women's manipulation of men hasn't been exposed and that they're willing to overlook it is because if they'll do something like just give them back their personal property and because uh, a guy identifies with his financial worth, if they're willing to keep his financial worth intact, they're willing to overlook the criminal, despicable and even criminal behavior of women and their ruthlessness in manipulating men. And uh, that's part of the reason why they, women haven't been exposed long ago. I'll have to take this dinner with you somehow. You'll sign them over to me, and then I will help your mother. Okay? I'm not signing anything. I know you wouldn't sign anything. I knew that wasn't going to happen. So I can't help you. That's not what you're worried about. I'm sitting here watching. You're thinking about... That is not how you kill. That's not true. You're a liar. You're a liar. What is your mom saying? She's not saying shit. She's sitting there. What's my mom saying? Check it out. My mom, your mom, everybody out of it. You know where you're sitting right now? That's Now, I don't think that he actually is offering to help her because um, he's... Like I said, the arrogance and entitlement. She says she's not signing anything, yet she's sitting in jail because she tried to have him killed. See what she has to say. Now completely given in. At this point, he's just been reminded again about the stuff that he does care about, you know. That somebody he thought loved him is willing to kill him. Yeah, he's upset about that. But now he's finally getting his senses about him and wheeling and dealing because the property issue is it's going to be less expensive if he actually negotiates to pay part of her lawyer fees instead of just going through the regular court system. The amount of time and the amount of money that it would take for him to get the property back in his own name. So he's starting to get more practical now, but only because he was reminded about the property during this conversation. I can't fix it. I just offered to help you, and again, you have the balls to say no to me, okay? But I can't help you. How do I believe you're going to help me if I do that? I, because you know why? Because I'm the one person on the phone that's ever done what they said they were going to do. Me. Okay? How do, how do I believe that? I don't that? say shit. I just said I'd help you, okay? You just basically said f*** you to me, which is hilarious considering your situation and considering what the f*** just happened today. He's giving her an out, and look how she acts. All right, so there you have it. Um, I'm going to put all the links below, including his victim impact statement, um, to show you what kind of a guy we're talking about. Uh, this guy was pretty hardened. He'd spent time in jail, and he was, uh, you know... It wasn't a pushover, we'll put it that way. And yet he was taken in by this female manipulative behavior. Now this conversation is just one example. And I think that if you go back through your mind and you think about all the arguments you've had with women who were definitely in the wrong, you'll see them use a lot of these tactics. But it's not comprehensive. There's a lot more that goes on. And like I said at the beginning, you can't just make a list of how women manipulate because it's all catered to the individual and they spend a lot of time collecting information. When feminists talk about power in society and uh, look at things like who's actually got a specific job title in a workplace or who, uh, what gender the President of the United States might be or whatever, women have a different sort of power, always have, and it's based on information. Information is like money to women. That's their currency. That's where they get their power. And they, uh, spend that currency 
through emotional dramas and uh, emotional displays. And then they somehow managed to get this image of being, you know, the compassionate ones, the emotional ones, the caring ones. What you need to do to understand female manipulation is to approach uh, the story, the, the um, methods, the techniques being employed by someone like Delia. Look at the difference between the police officer's reaction to her in the interrogation room and the way her husband reacted to her saying the same things. And try to be like the cop. Everything has been recorded. You were photographed in the convertible when you sat in this car in the front of CVS. What do you want to do? What do you want to do here, Diana? Listen to me. I didn't do anything. You're going to I jail. Didn't do anything. Please, I didn't do anything. Tell me you didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. You're going to jail today. As soon as I'm done, that cop go hard. They're gonna come if you're in handcuffs. You <laughs> go hard. To the Palm Beach County Jail, book you for solicitation not playing. of first degree murder on your husband. Your husband is well and alive. Thank God. Oh yeah, thank God. No, he doesn't want to see you. He doesn't want to see you. You better quit your plan. Listen to me. I want you to quit your acting. Damn. And get this over with. Damn. Yes, you are. Okay. You know what? You need a real good attorney. You need a real good attorney because we're going to show them the film where you say you're five thousand percent sure you want him dead. You think I made that up? You think I made that up? Damn. Exactly what's going to happen. I'm putting talking with you. When I leave this room, no other officer will ever talk to you again. The next time we see you is when you're in trial. And you can make it right here, or you're going to trial, and you're going to do life in prison. You want to cooperate with us, whatever you want to do. And now for the rape joke of the week. I always go for a run after sex. Can't risk getting caught. Yeah. If you got any questions, email me at playertalk8 at gmail.com. Uh, if you want to donate to the show, we'll go over this again at a later date. You can email me or send money to C U D A K I D the number 8 at yahoo.com via PayPal. Send it as a gift or a donation. Whatever you want. So that was today's show. Alright. I think I proved my point. Let's go. to mix with the young DJ Cooter. Tonight we gonna be going in. All the boys and boys and boys. Let's get it. On Player Talk Radio. Sneak and look at me and come. 
Even now. 